Hi there, my name's Andy and let me say straight away that this video will only be of interest to anybody that's following the repair of the Jason Kit W11 Wobulator uh, that I'll be using to uh, uh, repair the Eddystone radio. This is the circuit diagram of the Wobulator as printed in the magazine the radio constructor and uh, normally uh, I expect to be able to read uh, a circuit from uh, left to right and uh, as I look at this it becomes apparent that it uh, it almost wants to start on the right and uh, then work over uh, to the middle and then to the left and uh, I just find it a little bit confusing so I've uh, redrawn the circuit diagram. So this is the same circuit. I've uh, not shown the rectifier or the smoothing components, uh, the uh, capacitors and uh, resistors in the HT line. As uh, once you know they're there, they're not not very interesting, and we don't need to know anything about them. So so I've simply left them off. Um, there's only the three valves in the circuit and uh, to try and understand it a bit more I just thought it was worth uh, retracing it but in a more um, logical manner and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Just flipping back to the original circuit diagram and if we look at V2B on the right hand side there it's not really very clear what's going on there. There's a potentiometer and uh, it's got an output. Now I go back to my circuit that I've uh, redrawn. Now I've put that valve on the left hand side and I've shown the connection to the filament transformer and uh, now the, you can see the little resistor network there and the supply onto the grid of that valve and uh, reasonably you can uh, now picture that when that AC signal comes in uh, the grid is going to be biased uh, positive and negative um, as uh, the AC cycle uh, goes up and down. Now if we look at uh, V1B uh, just off center to the right of the picture there and uh, what we'll do is we'll put that in its uh, logical place and here it is in the center of the image. What I'll do is just make that all a little bit larger and I'm going to crop it so as we only see the bit I want to talk about. So the two coils or inductors that you see there um, are switch selectable with the range switch and the top ones acting as a, an anode choke and the uh, one below it in conjunction with C11 is setting the uh, tank circuit frequency so that's the frequency that uh, that part of the valve will be oscillating at C10 is the grid coupling capacitor and that's blocking the HT DC from getting onto the grid of the valve there and of course R8 is the grid resistor and uh, that's setting the grid voltage. C9 is the output uh, coupling capacitor to the next stage. So that just leaves the resistor R10 and the diode D2 and uh, just to remind you we've already established that the output from V2 will be a varying DC level uh, that's in sympathy with the 50 Hertz main cycle. So that varying DC level is going to be fed through R10 and to the anode of D2. D2 is a variable capacity diode so it's a very cap diode and what will happen is as we put a um, reverse bias uh, 
supply onto that uh, diode it will change its capacitance it's in series with C11 and those two of course are across the coil so the tank circuit frequency will change and it'll go up and down in sympathy with the varying DC level that's synchronized to the main supply so the output of V1 in fact will be um, an oscillating uh, frequency but it will be modulated uh, in sympathy with the mains or at least that's what I'm anticipating I say I haven't put the oscilloscope on this part of the circuit yet I want to understand what I expect to see rather than go bodging around looking to see what's actually there so that's taking care of uh, these two halves of valves and next we'll have a look at this one so we'll just zoom in and get the bit that's uh, of interest into view so just ignore everything on the left hand side of the screen at the moment and uh, in the middle there's the uh, coil and the two tuning capacitors A and B and again that coil is uh, switch selectable so it's a different coil for each of the three ranges of the equipment and then the little um, trimmer capacitor CT there is uh, just going to be used to pull the frequency so the coils and capacitors there uh, set the uh, operating frequency C1 is the coupling capacitor to uh, get that uh, oscillating frequency onto the grid it also blocks the uh, any DC that's coming and uh, of course R2 and R3 form the uh, grid resistor so that sets the voltage on the grid as they ignore everything to the left and uh, the cathode is uh, just connected directly to ground so as I say if uh, you ignore everything to the left then uh, that's uh, just a, a little oscillator and the output is taken off the anode of uh, the valve via C4 and uh, that goes up off the page uh, so again that's that's quite straightforward you could uh, anticipate what that bit of the circuit's going to do now if we look at this bit on the left that's a secondary of the HT transformer and uh, so I haven't drawn the rectifier in as I don't care about it and um, you'll see that the uh, um, bottom of that transformer is connected via uh, R4 a 1 mega ohm resistor to uh, the top of R3 at the bottom of the page there and the, the other side of the transformer uh, is connected via C3 to uh, the same place the top of R3 so that uh, combination of uh, C and R uh, across the mains is going to give us some sort of signal that is synchronized with the mains and uh, that's going to give us a cutoff voltage so what's going to happen is uh, that signal is going to uh, swing positive and negative you see the center of the transformer is uh, tapped to ground uh, so we're going to see an AC signal uh, that swings uh, above and below zero there anything that goes positive is going to be clipped by the diode D1 so uh, any positive voltages are just going to be grounded there uh, but any negative going voltages are going to be applied to the uh, grid of the valve via R2 there and um, that means that that, uh, that valve is going to be blocked and it's going to stop it from oscillating uh, or at least that's, that's what I'm assuming is going to happen there um, and you'll also see that um, uh, just off that transformer to the left there's the X output um, 
and that goes to drive the oscilloscope when we're using the wobulator uh, in conjunction with a radio and uh, an oscilloscope. Um, okay, so I think that, that's got those items covered, and I've got a reasonable uh, uh, anticipation of what I might expect there. So now I think uh, with that explanation that I've uh, just given, uh, this circuit, the original circuit, starts to make uh, a little more sense. You can start and see your way around it now. But I, I still think my circuit is easier to take in. So finally, turning back to my circuit, you can see that the output of uh, that uh, variable frequency oscillator is fed up onto the grid of the mixer and output valve and that signal is going to be mixed with the output from the frequency modulator valve and the output is going to come uh, from the anode of the mixer output valve and uh, be fed via the attenuator through to the RF output and what we'll get of course is the difference between those two frequencies um, so what I would like to do is disconnect that capacitor C4 so that I could look at uh, both parts of the uh, or both uh, oscillators independent of one another I've had a quick look for C4 and it's a bit of a devil to get at um, everything's very tightly packed in this um, but anyway I, I wouldn't normally redraw a circuit for everything I look at but I think uh, a little thing like this where I'm not sure uh, how it works uh, once I start to look at the circuit I can get an understanding of what it is and even if my understanding is incorrect at least as I start going through the circuit uh, hopefully <laughs> it'll come to me um, but now I can uh, at attack the equipment with the oscilloscope with the anticipation of certain waveforms and voltages. So um, uh, anyway, uh, I hope you found that interesting. Um, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.